streaming audio, exclusive content, and Steve Batten Show archives, all at stevebatten.com. That's Steve, B-A-T-T-O-N, dot com. so much for listening whether you're listening over 50,000 watt freedom 1110 wkqa or if you're listening over al gore's interwebs at stevebatten.com steve b-a-t-t-o-n.com you just heard norval spell it a few moments ago click on listen 24 7 and voila you are there your only live and local choice for talk in the afternoons in hampton roads 3 to 7 p.m show repeats 7 to 11 p.m on the website and then the best of show all throughout the weekend. I hope you enjoy that. All right. Now, I have been excited about this next guest here um, ever since I got my hands on this book. The book is called Unusual for Their Time on the Road with America's First Ladies. And it's none other than the First Ladies man, Andrew Oak. Andrew, thanks for joining me, my friend. Hey, Steve. Good to talk to you. Yes, sir. So that's a that's a pretty bold title, First Ladies Man. I like it. <laughs> well, it, when you when you travel to as many places as I have, and you study all these First Ladies as I have for the C-SPAN series, First Ladies Influence and Image, I, there really wasn't a door that was unlocked or a vault that I didn't have the combination or key to. I've seen some amazing collections and read some letters that not many people have ever read, and even gone into private homes. So I I really do consider myself the first lady's man. That's excellent. Now, the book I have is volume one, which would suggest there are other volumes coming down the road. And that I, is absolutely I'm, true. I'm astute like that. I'm, you know, I'm pretty quick like that. I figure these things You out. are quick like that. You should get a radio show or something. <laughs> you know, nah, fast yeah, you. I tried that before. So, Andrew, one of the <laughs> things I noticed, and I, I, I told you when I talked to you before, that I was, I was pretty excited about having you on, but the more I look at the book, the more excited I am. This book is great, man. I, it's like I was almost late for work today because I was sitting at a lunch counter, and I'm like, no, I want to I talk about this. No, I want to talk about this. There's too much in here. There's too much in here. There, you know? There's a lot in here, and I tell you, my good buddy John Croft is the reason why there's even a book at all because I was trying to do every first lady in one book. And he said, you know, you could cut him in half. You could just do the first half of the, of the existence of America, you know, the first two centuries. And, and this sort of light went over my head. I'm like, you know, that's the way the series was designed, and that's the way it makes sense. So volume one covers Martha Washington up through Ida McKinley. So it's every first lady and hostess and woman that sat in that role for uh, the 1700s and 1800s. And then volume two will pick up with Edith Roosevelt and more, and more, more amazing stories as we go through into, uh, you know, whoever will be the next first lady or presidential spouse. Right. And and that was one of the things that you talked about in the book that I hadn't thought of before. Not every president had a wife first lady. Matter of fact, there was a 12-year period I read in your book where there was no real first lady in the sense that we traditionally think of, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the strangest times in American history, and it's also perfect for campaign season. We're right in the middle of a very heated and very odd campaign season, a yes. very odd presidential election. Yes. And if you go back, you know, everyone's always telling me, you hear around Washington, D.C., you know, this, and across the country, this is the craziest election, or this is the wildest campaign, or no one's ever said this, or can you believe what Trump said about Cruz's wife and what Cruz said about Trump's wife? It goes back and forth. Here's the thing. No one has died yet in this election, and someone did die in the campaign when Andrew Jackson ran against sitting President yes. John Quincy Adams. Yes. Yeah. The John Quincy Adams campaign machine was so ruthless with Rachel Jackson that Andrew Jackson attributes his wife's heart attack and stroke to reading about her, reading awful things about oh, herself man. in the newspaper. I mean, it, it's campaigns are rough. Politics is tough business. That's worse than uh, Ted Cruz punching Heidi in the face when he bowed out. That was just too bad, man. Exactly. Uh, all right. An elbow to the chin seems rather, rather tame now. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And so does <laughs> Carly Fiorina th falling through the trap door, but that's a whole different thing. So the whole lot of stories in Virginia, one in particular, Charles City. Um, you talked about how a 23-year-old met a newly widowed 52-year-old president. This would be Absolutely. John Tyler, right? And Julia Gardner. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the story was told to me by John Tyler's living grandson. Right. That's grandson, not great grandson. Right. And and it's it, it, it's I mean the story it, it's in the book to detail. I'll give you the, the cliff notes, and of course you've read it, and hopefully people pick this book up. And 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 there's a great story behind um, uh, the the meeting of this of this w- widower president, and they were taking a new gunboat down the Potomac and showing off in front of uh, uh, Mount Vernon. And when they fired the gun, a young Julia Gardner's New York senator father was killed, and she basically passed out into the arms of President John Tyler, and she writes in a letter to her mother that she woke up. The next thing she remembers is being carried down the gangplank by the President of the United States and looked up into his eyes and said, I knew at that point that the President loved me. And I, you just, I mean, when you get a story like that, of course, his, his grandson wasn't alive to meet his grandfather right, in, right. In, the, in the 1800s. But when this story goes down, and you get it firsthand from the family, sitting in President Tyler and Mrs. Tyler's living room with their grandson telling you this story, I, I mean, it's just, the access was incredible. And I try and relate this in the book with, with the enthusiasm that I clearly have for this topic. It, it's just, it's so much fun. The adventure was so great, pinballing all across the United States yeah. to, to visit these homes and see these collections. And, and, and I hope that comes through in the book. So I don't know if you use this line or not. I, I may have missed it. That was love at first faint, I guess. Then, right? So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't. Maybe that'll make it into the second edition of this. And by the way, uh, you mentioned the series. There's actually two seasons of the series that you mentioned earlier, right? On C-SPAN. Is that is that correct? Two seasons? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. you can you can see that it's on. I've got a link to the C-SPAN series on my website, firstladiesman.com. It's mm-hmm. right at the top of the video page. And at that point, you can pretty much select. You can go out of order and watch every first lady's show that we did. But we covered every first lady and hostess from Martha Washington to Michelle Obama in two seasons. It was uh, it was a mad dash to the finish line, I tell you. Now, by the way, at the end of that chapter we were just talking about, chapter thirteen, Julia Tyler, you did something that. Um, um, it, 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 I, I understand now that you are a kindred spirit. You are a barbecue fan, man, and you write about this in a number of places in the oh. book, don't you? <laughs> Listen to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there, there is some good barbecue in Virginia. And, and at the end of each chapter, I try to do this. You know, when I was going on this journey, I was a, I was a, a, a crew of one. I was a one-man band. I did camera, audio, lighting, research, interview, B-roll, uh, location scout and many of these places I'd never been to before and I hadn't worked with any of these people so I was doing the work of like a five to ten man camera team that would take a week but wow. I was doing it in a work day so I mean it, it was really really it, it, it was it was an effort it was an effort to get this done so at the end of the day I need a good meal so I would post these meals and I'm putting them on Facebook and tweet, tweeting them out and Instagram and everything and people got so into the project I decided to include that in the book because they were like, oh my gosh, you should do a diners and drive dives and, you know, food critic or write a <laughs> right. food blog or right. something. Right. And so it made it in there. And, and I, you know, one of the best barbecue stories is yet to come in volume two in Austin, Texas. Oh I'll man. Okay. All right. Okay. Of course, Texas barbecue is a whole different animal, literally, than we it have is. here, but you, you know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Is. But I tell you, that one outside of Montpelier that I write about too, yeah. uh, uh, barbecue exchange, that's one of the best pulled pork barbecue sandwiches I've ever had in my life. It's well, dude, amazing. If you ever get down this way, I'll take you out to a few. Okay. I navigate, oh, I'll, I'll, I, I navigate by barbecue joints. So I love the Norfolk area. I used to go down there with my band in the 90s. We used to play the King's Head Inn, and uh, we had a big following down there. I've had a lot of fun in the Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach area. All right, cool deal. I also noted that you are a Harley Davidson T-shirt fan. Do you have T-shirts from the dealers down here? Real quick question, just just curious. So. Uh, I I have some surrounding from back in my band touring days. Yeah, I got you. But, um, and, we, we, we need to get me down there and, and pick up some new shirts because I'm sure there's some new dealers down there. I way. got you. All right, so another story that I found fascinating, and I had heard this somewhere a long time ago and had forgotten it, actually. And what does this have to do with a first lady? Throwing a baby out with the bathwater. This is a great story, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that is. You know, there's that's another boy. You you really do. I appreciate the the uh, the careful attention you've given to the book because there's another neat little faction of the book where I put, throw in these little production notes and little things that gone along through my trip that maybe, like you say, don't relate to first ladies. And I was at the Grant home in Galena, Illinois. It's one of, if not the only house that the that the Grants actually owned. When um, when Grant decided to run for president, he 
launched his campaign in Galena, Illinois. It's a beautiful valley town in northern Illinois. And uh, and when he got back, a, a, a Civil War hero, the, uh, some businessman in the town gave him this beautiful, beautiful house up on a hill. And we were up there and walking through the house, and we went through the kitchen, and they said, oh, look, a copper tub. And, you know, well, of course, that's where we get to throw the baby out with the bathwater story. And I said, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is what is baby in bathwater? I don't, I don't know this. And so what they would do is, you know, water was a commodity. Everything was a commodity. Everything was an effort back then. Uh, and you would have to heat this water and take great pains to, to keep it uh, as, as hot as possible. And there was a pecking order. So the head of the household, typically the, the, the man, the dad, would take the first hottest, freshest bath, then the mother, then the kids in age, and the last person to get the the bath would be the baby and they would say to the the <laughs> servant or the house mom or the or even slave in some cases they right. say hey don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Right. And you picture these women grabbing these giant <laughs> these giant tubs and throwing this water out of the yard and babies going tumbling through the grass but i guess it had to happen sometime or someone wouldn't have had to warn someone about it right so it's this giant copper tub right and this, this, this yeah don't throw the full of <laughs> dirty bath water by the time the little baby got it, which I thought that was unusual too. I mean, you'd think a newborn baby, you'd give them the first bath so they'd get the cleanest water to prevent infection or sickness or whatever, but right. you know, we'd live and learn, I guess. Right, right. And then in one chapter, one particular, I found three very interesting facts. Uh, this has to do with um, there were only two bachelors uh, when they went into the White House, right? Oh, yeah, and, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. All right, and yeah. one of them married what turned out to be um, the youngest first lady. And there's also a story about Baby Ruth candy bars, all wrapped up in the same chapter, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Francis Cleveland, Francis yeah. Folsom Cleveland, beautiful Francis. And um, uh, yes, Grover Cleveland is the is the second president to move into the White House as a bachelor. The first is James Buchanan, right. who never marries and and brings his niece Harriet Lane. That's a great chapter to go. I love back that and chapter. Reread. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's fantastic. <laughs> but Francis Cleveland. At 21 to Grover Cleveland's 49 years. So he's 49, and he marries a young 21-year-old. She's basically Jacqueline Kennedy before Jacqueline Kennedy. And that's where you get the baby Ruth story, because the public, even back then, loved a young, beautiful, stylish, mm -hmm. fashionable new mom. So they were having these babies. The, the timing that I explain in the different years as far as whether the Baby Ruth candy bar was about Baby Ruth, uh, uh, the president's daughter, or about babe, babe Ruth, the, the, the baseball star and things, you know, they're, they're, that's, that's you know, you can, you can kind of figure that out yeah. as, as well with, with the timing in the years. But there was speculation that it was about the, – the candy company said, oh, it's about Baby Ruth, uh, the president's daughter, so they wouldn't get sued by Babe Ruth and the baseball league and all that kind of other stuff. But uh, it's, it's still a fantastic story of a young the, – the youngest. I can't imagine that we have anyone that would break her record if, if any president nowadays – can you imagine walked in with a 20-year-old with a wife? I mean, he'd get destroyed in the press. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Yes, sir. All right. Andrew Oak, fascinating book. When does Volume 2 come out? Do you know yet? Uh, uh Volume two. Gosh, you might have been talking to my publicist. She's ah! telling me that I should have started volume two already. You guys are all after me. You know what? The fact that, that people even look at volume one and say, when's volume two coming out? I'm flattered. I'm humbled. It is in the works, I assure you. Okay. We are working feverishly to uh, to get that down. But uh, the, the pattern has been set in volume one, and I just couldn't be more pleased that people are receiving it as well as they have. So thank you to everyone who's bought it, and thank you to folks like you that bring me on your radio show. It's um, it's it's. A fun book, and I'm, and I'm glad you find it that way. And listen, I'd love to have you on again. Ten minutes is far too little time to talk about this book and everything. Like, honestly, Andrew, when, you know, I, I thought it was kind of cool at first, and then the more I read it, it was like, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. I'm showing the, the, the folks in the restaurants, like, hey, look at this story. And they're like, okay, Steve, all right, okay. we, we have you, you know what, Steve, <laughs> the funny thing is about the whole First Ladies thing in general is that I'm not a career historian. I'm not, I didn't do primarily uh, uh, historical television, but I started to learn about these women and I fell in love with these women across the ages. And it's so digestible for people because we all have an image when we think of First Lady. You might think of Nancy Reagan. I might think of Martha Washington. Someone else might think of, you know, wh whoever, Francis Cleveland, say. But, but I'm sort of reintroducing people to people that they already know but don't know too much about. Right. So we're not starting at ground zero 
though, of people don't know what a first lady is, or they don't have this image or this concept of who that first lady is. And when I start telling them about first ladies that they couldn't even name their first name before, like Lucy Hayes, one of the most remarkable first ladies in, in history. But you wouldn't have known her name was Lucy five minutes ago before you picked the book up. Maybe right. not right. You right. specifically, right. 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 but you know it goes that way, and people are people are just finding it to be a, a really good time. So I'm 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 just I'm very pleased with the whole project. Couldn't Excellent. Have asked for it to go any better. Excellent. And Andy, uh, thank you so much. Andrew Oak O C H. It's pronounced Oak, spelled O C H. Firstladiesman.com. It's up on the Facebook page at Steve Batten Show. Please come on the show again, and thanks again for the book, man. I appreciate it, Steve. I- I'll come back any and every time. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm serious. You come down this way, man. Barbecue. Let's go do it. All right. <laughs> I'm, I, you tell me the place, and I'm buying. I'll see you. All right. <laughs> the Steve Batten Show. Five four one talk is the phone number. That's five four one eighty two fifty five. The area code seven five seven. Email address is mail at stevebatten dot com. Mail at steve b a t t o n dot com. We'll see if we can scare up some Fred Schoenfeld from the Commodore Theater. Find out what's playing over there on the way next. Freedom eleven ten. WKQA.